Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and today's tutorial is a scrapbook style collage tumbler. So it's a design that I've never tried before but I've seen many makers do this same style and it turns out absolutely gorgeous. I found this vinyl from Hobby Lobby and it kind of inspired me to try one of these tumblers for myself. So we're going to be using a lot of different elements for this tumbler to kind of tie it all together. So of course everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box. Make sure you check that out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media. Before you go, please feel free to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I post videos to this channel every Tuesday and Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and you don't want to miss what I have in store for us this spring. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. All right, so here are some of the supplies that I'm going to be using today. So I have some tattoos that I got from Amazon. I have these $1 transfer sheets that I actually got from the Dollar Tree. And then I have this rustic floral wood grain type removable vinyl that I got from Hobby Lobby. So we're going to start with a 24 ounce plump that I have sanded and very poorly prepped with a white spray paint. And we're going to do a full vinyl wrap on this tumbler. So you guys have seen me do full vinyl wraps before. So we're going to kind of walk through this part of the uh, tutorial pretty quickly. But you guys know that I love to use my tumbler cradle to help me do most of my vinyl wraps. I just seem to get the best wrap when I use my tumbler cradle in order to keep my tumbler as straight as possible while I'm rolling on the vinyl. So I'm going to use just my paper cutter there just to get my vinyl all kind of shaped up so that I'm not using the entire sheet, saving some of that for a future project. And this is the Paper Studio paper. You can get these in single sheets from Hobby Lobby. I will link them in the description box. And this is actually technically removable vinyl. I'm not really sure why all the really pretty designs are removable vinyl, but they are. Um, but this is still something that you can use to full wrap your cup and obviously seal over top so you don't have to worry about it coming up at any point in time, but it is a little bit easier to remove if you are someone who you're not really great at vinyl wrapping or you have a tendency to need to pull up sections when you're vinyl wrapping so you're not getting any wrinkles. So because this is removable, it's a little bit easy to lift back up and then place back down if that makes sense. So I've just adhered that one edge like I always do and now using my squeegee tool to really just help me guide that paper backing off the back and get a nice smooth adhesion of my vinyl to my tumbler here. So I'm going to go all the way to the very edge and once I can feel that very uh, first section that we've placed on here, I'm just going to cut off that excess, remove the rest of the backing, and then I'm going to trim up that line where the two edges meet with my craft knife. So I will go a little bit over the first edge that we placed down so that I don't have any of the stainless steel tumbler showing, but I will cut off most of the excess vinyl so that we don't have a weird seam on the back side of this cup. And then once I'm done with that, I'm just going to take my craft knife and go all the way around the top edge, cutting off the excess. And then I will use my cup edging tool to go around the bottom. For some reason, my video completely cut off. So that section was cut off of the video, but I will place another video right here where you can watch me do that in another vinyl wrapped tutorial. So once I had gotten the cup completely wrapped, I did put that back on the turner and I applied one to two coats of epoxy, about 20 ml each of my amazing quick coat to get a nice seal over the vinyl so we could do the rest of the decal and styling work here. So now that that is nice and kind of cured and good for me to touch tack free, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding, just a little light sanding just to scuff up the surface and then clean that off with some 91% rubbing alcohol. So we're going to go in with some pastel paint. I just feel like this gives me all things spring vibes and so I wanted to add a little bit of kind of rustic paint look to this as well. Originally when I was going into this you know I had like a design style in mind but for this particular tumbler I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted it to look like. So I know I wanted to add a little bit of paint elements to it but I was I'm gonna be honest I was a little bit nervous to add such bright colored paints but overall I'm definitely satisfied with how this turned out. So I have three colors here. I have a light 
light pink, a light yellow, and I believe it's called a purple taffy. And I have three different chip brushes here. So you can purchase these from the dollar store, from Home Depot, any of your regular kind of, you know, uh, tool shop stores, those kinds of places. You can even get them from Walmart. So really inexpensive to definitely use. And I have like an entire box of these because I use them for a lot of different crafts when I am making tumblers. So I'm going to use my chip brushes to give me kind of like this rustic, almost chipped paint look. And when I was first putting the colors on, I was a little bit concerned that it was going to be too much, that, that it was going to be a little overwhelming and overtaking the cup. So I tried to be kind of purposeful into where I was putting the different strips of like paint. And so this kind of reminded me a little bit of like that new tumbler design that's been going around with the kind of paint strips and like the brush stroke look. So we're kind of doing that with this, but we're using the chip brushes. So we're getting a lot of like spaces and gaps in the paint so it's not a pure brush stroke of paint if that makes sense so I really just love kind of like this rustic really just patina style look if you will with these chip brushes so I'm just kind of going back and forth with my three colors here my three pastel colors just kind of all over the cup I am going to leave a little section where I'm not going to put any paint whatsoever but I'm really just trying to give myself a little bit of design and dimension throughout the cup with these brush strokes so kind of going over over one another, kind of just building upon each color and trying to make it look natural as if it's part of the cup. So once I kind of was done with adding all of my brush strokes, I'm going to let that completely dry. And then we're going to go in and add the rest of our design elements, which are going to be some rub on transfers and some tattoos. So after the acrylic paint has dried, we're going to go ahead and start adding the rest of our design elements. So I haven't put anything else on this cup. I've just painted it. I've let it dry. And now we're going to add the rest of the decorations to this cup. So these are rub on transfers that I found in the craft section of the Dollar Tree. So literally these are very similar to some very popular rub on transfers that you can purchase from other craft sellers. And I wanted to try these out, although I was a little bit worried that they were from the dollar store that they weren't going to work as well but I decided what the heck let's give them a try so literally all you do is take it off of the paper backing and you literally place it directly on your cup you can cut these if you want and I'm going to show you a section where I did choose to cut them but I decided I loved everything that was on this entire sheet that I got here and so I decided that I was going to just use the entire sheet and wrap it on as much of the cup as I could get it wrapped on so lay it flat on top of your cup and then using either a squeegee or something with kind of like a, a hard edge to really be be able to push down this entire sheet so that the transfers stick to your cup. So this took a little bit of elbow grease, if you will, because I was using the full sheet and not smaller sections. It definitely was easier when I cut them. But again, I loved everything that was on this entire sheet and I wanted every single piece on it. So I just decided to go for it. So once I feel like I have the sheet of rub on transfers pushed down pretty well. I'm going to start to begin to remove the transfer sheet that's on top here. And so I do have to be careful and I'm mindful and kind of as I go, I am pushing the transfer sheet back down and using my squeegee if I feel like I need to get some more kind of you know, rub on there in order to make sure that the transfer stays and that the plastic sheet on top comes off. But really, once it's nice and burnished down, it really should be very easy for you to peel up. I did find it a little bit harder for some of the really fine, thin wording that was on this original transfer sheet. And I did probably crack or, or mess up probably one to two of the images on here. But again, because we're going with like this old style, like scrapbook look like vintage look it really did just kind of play into the whole design element of the cup which just enhanced it even more so I'm going to continue to just kind of push down with my squeegee tool and start to remove that that pl plastic topper that's on top of the transfer sheet in order to get all of these little pieces that are on this transfer sheet onto my tumbler. So once I have done that, I then am going to move on to a second sheet of rub-on transfers that again got from the dollar store. These are a little bit different and I'm actually going to cut some of these pieces and I'm going to show you kind of how you can apply these singly to the tumbler without having to apply a full sheet and how quick and easy it is to do those. 
So now we're going to apply some more rub-on transfers. So this is a second sheet of rub-on transfers that I got from the Dollar Tree, but I'm going to cut these. And I don't want all of the pieces that are on this sheet. I'm just going to cut the ones out that most aesthetically match what I'm going for on my cup. So a lot of the floral decals, there's a butterfly on here. And actually a lot of these words were in French, I believe. So I wasn't even really sure what the what the different wording said. So I only included a few of these elements on the cup that kind of match the aesthetic. So once I have the images that I want cut out, I'm then just going to do the exact same thing, but on a much smaller version. So I'm going to push the transfer onto the cup, really burnish that down with my squeegee tool there, and then literally remove the transfer. It's so simple and easy and so much easier to apply them one smaller section at a time than trying to do the full sheet. So I definitely really enjoyed using these. I'm definitely going to try and see if I can go to the Dollar Tree and grab some more. The only thing is there's not a whole lot of them to choose from. And what's also a little bit of a bummer about these sheets is they have some really gorgeous elements on each of the sheets, but the images are so close together and kind of layered on top of one another. It makes it very difficult to cut around the images that you want without cutting into other images that you may be saving for later. So that was a little bit of a bummer, which was why for that first sheet, I just applied the entire sheet because I loved all of it and I didn't want to cut it apart and then kind of have some of the pieces off of other images completely missing if I wanted to place it somewhere else. So I'm going to finish applying this last row rub-on transfer. And then the next and last final element that we're going to add are just a couple of floral tattoos that I got from a pack of transfer temporary tattoos off of Amazon. So these temporary tattoos I got from a pack of temporary tattoos I got off of Amazon. It comes in a pack of a bunch of different florals. And out of the entire pack, these were the ones that I found that were kind of the close closest color that I had on my cup. And because those are temporary tattoos, they're very similar to like water slide, clear water slide. So I know that it's gonna be a transparent look, which is perfect because I know that it's going to match really well with all the other elements that I have on the cup. So just placing that face down on the tumbler and then using just a wet paper towel to get the backing nice and wet so that I'm able to peel that transfer off. So just like you would when you were a kid, sticking all those tattoos up and down your arm. Come on, I know you did it because I did it too, right? So you're just going to apply those tattoos just like that and then remove that backing once you have the backing nice and soaked so that the transfer stays on the cup and does not pull up. So after I was done applying these tattoos, that was the final element. I thought about adding glitter or something, but I really just loved like this really vintage scrapbook look that this was giving. And so I didn't feel like I needed to add anything else. So this went back on the Turner for another coat of epoxy just to cover up all of the decals. And then we're going to just finish up this cup with the very bottom of the tumbler. So we've gotten another coat of epoxy on the cup and so everything is pretty smooth. I didn't do any sort of sealer whatsoever over the decals, but I did notice that it probably could have used either like a quick coat or like polycrylic over top just to help them really lay flat. I did have some of them kind of feel like they were sticking up similar to like glitter when you don't apply like a sealer over top, but I don't think it really compromised any of the look of any of the transfers that I applied, but I did just decide to give everything kind of a rough sand. And then we're going to go in, of course, and deal with the rim with my nail file tool here, just to get that fine line of stainless steel all the way around the tumbler to make sure that our final coats of epoxy really adhere to the top rim of the cup and not over the top of the lip of the cup. So once I am done sanding this entire tumbler, I'll just go over it with a paper towel and some 91% alcohol to clean all the debris off so we don't end up with any debris in our final coats. And then now we're going to go ahead and deal with the bottom of this cup. So this is still like a very faint white from my very poor paint, my very poor paint job from prep time. And so we're just going to tape off the bottom edge of the cup with a bit of painter's tape and get this all covered so that we can then just spray paint that with a flat white spray paint. It's going to create a beautiful seamless looking a bottom and I just love kind of the look of the the white bottomed of the tumbler. I just feel like it finishes it off so nice. I thought about going in with like a wood grain look but I didn't want to try and deal with figuring out which of my brown wood grain or alcohol links was going to match best. So I just decided to leave it white and kind of just go with that. So 
tape up the bottom, then put a little bit of some plastic wrap around the tumbler so that we can preserve obviously the rest of the cup and not get anything along the decals and sides of the cup that we don't want. Then take that outside to do a flat white spray paint. Let that dry completely and then of course as soon as that was done I removed the tape and the plastic wrap and then this went back on the turner for two final coats of epoxy. And so of course you guys know that I like to use Amazing Clear Cast Plus and that is with that added UV protection so I can make sure that my cups stay white for much longer and make sure that none of my cups yellow over time. So that is kind of it for this tumbler tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final results of this cup. So I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, definitely give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys again for another video on Saturday. Bye!